So if I think about how these ideas that I just introduced to you, how these ideas that I will introduce to you in the upcoming weeks kind of translate in the real world, how they were perceived, how they are perceived in the real world, what is the impact we are currently doing or having as social psychologists on the real world? I often think of it as kind of like this quote here from Charles Dickens and saying it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And I think there's some truth to that. Let's start with the best of times. Um, and the the reason why I think never ever has the world been more open to the idea that we use psychology in order to change behavior. Never ever were so many governments, companies uh, uh, interested in trying to translate the insights that social psychology has to offer into behavior. So this all started, you might uh, uh, probably know already, but I just, it might be worthwhile repeating here with the book by Richard Thaler and Carl Sunstein. Richard Thaler is actually an economist, Carl Sunstein. Sunstein is a lawyer, but they wrote this book of how if we would change uh, certain aspects of the situation, if we use certain nudges, we could really shift people's behavior so that they would be happier and healthier and would save more money and would live longer and more meaningful lives. And what they basically forcefully argue in this best-selling book is to say, okay, we need to take psychology serious. We need to take psychology serious when we design our policies, when and we want to help our employees and our students and so forth to be more productive and be happier. So in the UK, there was an idea that was very kind of uh, embraced very early on. I think the UK was the first uh, government here. I think it was under David Cameron that they decided to use these ideas and they started the Behavior Insights team. It's a company that still exists that's bigger than ever and it uses psychological insights in order to increase um, the effectiveness of policies, to help people to find jobs, to be happier, to be healthier and so forth. And what they do is they use insights from social psychology in particular and psychology in general to help that. The NHS is really interested. It's like, oh, if we can kind of just have cheap nudges that change something. I think as a social psychologist you can see that a lot of the things that we will talk in our episodes at the end, at the later episodes, when we talk about nudges and so forth, when we go a little bit more on the surface, that this is something a lot of um, companies and uh, governments around the world embrace because it's promised cheap uh, improvements to our lives. Just kind of framing things in the right way will lead to that. I think if you believe a little bit of what I told you about the naive psychologist, about the importance of perception, then you will see that it's not often that easy to change a perception, to change the beliefs and theories people have. And yet you can't change all the problems with nudges. One particular problem with this approach is also that it often kind of tries to cover up maybe problems, structural problems, societal problems, right? And I I think we can't solve them and we should not ignore them. And governance might sometimes go for psychological interventions because they're cheaper than making substantial changes. But overall, I remember three or four years ago, I was in a, a conference uh, with uh, economists, behavior economists, uh, uh, psychologists, social psychologists like me, and I was talking to some colleagues, and I was like, man, I get every day, I get a call, no, every week, every day is a little bit exaggerated. The person said, like, he was from Scandinavia, it's like, every week I get a call from some kind of company, he said, can you uh, recommend somebody who can help us nudge our uh, customers here, nudge our customers there? There's a huge demand for that and especially if you have some kind of proper expertise. But there are also problems associated with that. I think if you remember from uh, the first uh, or the, the second year, the uh, uh, first term, uh, social psychology, and you remember that the replication crisis hit social psychology particularly hard. Social psychology, psychological studies are less likely to be reproduced than um, other studies in psychology. And there are many, many problems associated with this. I also think that uh, social psychology is doing many, many things that other disciplines are not doing to kind of right those wrongs, but the wrongs are there. And the wrongs do not only affect um, uh, like scientific studies, research studies, uh, basic research, but also intervention studies. So some of the interventions um, that we will talk about do not replicate or kind of archive that where people think like, hmm, does it actually work as well? And we will talk about this next session when we talk about um, vice interventions as well. But I want to alert you to that, right? It's I'm not a mind 
like an idiotic cheerleader for these interventions. There's more nuance to that. And in some areas, the promise that these uh, uh, interventions hold have not kind of uh, been fulfilled. There's also something where um, during the uh, corona crisis, during the pandemic, right, the governments all over the world seeked advice um, and trying to help to change the behavior of people in the UK in particular. And a lot of uh, psychologists are like, okay, are we sure that the recommendations we are making are actually based on the best insights that we have? Are they actually based on reliable empirical findings? Or are we being a little bit bold? Would we trust the life of thousands of people um, on these um findings in social psychology but in uh, psychology in general here you have Stuart Ritchie he wrote a kind of famous post and says like don't trust the psychologist on coronavirus he thought like they don't know their studies are not well enough and you shouldn't listen to them i think there's some some truth to that and we should be careful when we make recommendations for interventions but we should not stop making these attempts but it is important to keep in mind while demand is higher than ever and you can have a great career pursuing what we are doing here in our module there's also some dangers that there's a danger of over promise and especially when it comes to quick cheap uh, psychological interventions they might not have the effects that uh, a lot of them promise to have